All right, welcome. This is going to be a guide on how to get started in Zombody Once Told Me Zombie Roleplay Server. Now you're going to find yourself in the Discord, first of all. And if you are brand new and you just joined the Discord, you need to make sure you go over to Rules, read down through all of the rules, hit Accept. That will give you your roles to, uh, to view the rest of Discord. Uh, I will tell you, there's a lot of useful information in Discord. Uh, the community area is definitely a cool place to chat with other people, post screenshots, videos. Uh, if you're a streamer, you can post your streams into this area. There's a tech channel to help people out with uh, tech advice. There is a channel only for the ladies. There's a music sharing channel, games to check out, and a role request channel. Uh, we also have the zombie server specific section of Discord, which is going to have the connection information, mission statement for the server, the server story, which is basically where we're at currently with the overall story that is happening in the server. Server updates. This is probably one of the most important channels that I can recommend to you in Discord. This is going to contain all of the updates that are applied to the server, all of the patch notes. Um, so if you're like, why don't this medical box have a medical bag in it anymore? Something is wrong. No, it's in the updates. Just make sure you... You know, take a look at that from time to time. There's a survivor message board where you can message other survivors or just post up things like looking for my kin, trade, radio channel, things like that, general chat, survivor application, uh, uh, I'm sorry, appreciation, crafting ideas. There's a whole bunch of stuff here that you can utilize. So as long as you get all that understood and figured out, you'll be good to go to join the server, which is what we're going to do right now, and show you guys how to get started. So you're going to launch your 5M. We're going to start out with character creation. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time with it, but I'm just going to go over a brief explanation on how that all works. Current date is uh, December 1st, so the server has not even been launched yet. All right, here we go. So this should be the very first screen that you ever uh, arrive at. It's going to be your character selection screen. You can see I do have a few characters that I've already created. Um, but I can go ahead and just delete these characters. They don't really matter. These are just test characters to begin with. So I'm going to delete him. And we are going to start with a all-new character. So this guy's name is going to be Test... Tester. January 15th. Okay, so this is in centimeters. I believe 220 would be the max. Um, I believe around 180, 170 is probably your typical. Uh, we will hit create. The height does not really matter at all. It does not actually determine your character's height. Okay, here we go into the base or the uh, character creation. So we're going to be using the arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate the menu on the bottom left-hand corner. You can see that you can use the shift and the alt button to rotate around your character. Again, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. But um, one thing that I would recommend if you're used to creating characters, you may notice that the... Uh, Values of the character are going to be a little bit hard to make your typical character that you normally might make. So you might want to go ahead and just flatten all these out. Um, right now we have them really tweaked, so that kind of makes a custom character when you first come in. But you can go ahead and uh, put all these to zero. And then it might be a little bit easier to create a character that you are familiar with creating. Okay. Only other thing that we really want to mention uh, in this guide is going to be for new people. Under t-shirt and torso, it can be a little bit confusing. So the first thing that I would recommend um, is to go ahead and set t-shirt 2 and torso 2 to 0. Now, under t-shirt and torso, 15, the number 15, will be your default to not have any kind of clothing on your character. 
So if you're finding it a little confusing, what's overlapping what, you can go ahead and just put those both on 15, zero them out, and then you get a good idea of what you're actually looking at. So we'll start with t-shirt, and we're going to go up from 15, and we can see that it's just a section of the t-shirt. Now, the reason it's like that, and this is obviously only information for new people, but the reason it's like that is because it's meant to go in combination with the torso uh, options as well. So you can see right there, you know, the torso is the jacket, t-shirt is the under part, and you only need to cover up that much of the skin. So that's why it works like that. Okay, so an easy thing to do if you're new is just to go and set t-shirt to 15 and just work off of the torso option. Find something that you like. And then you can go, you know, from there and um, make the rest of it work. So here you can see, okay, well, I like that, but I don't have any arms. Okay, well, you need to go down to your arm selection. And again, make sure arms 2 is on 0. And the reason you want to make sure that the second option is zeroed out is because that is going to be the color changing option of the clothing. Now, if the clothing doesn't have an alternative color and you have section 2 selected, when you go through, sometimes you might see something that doesn't show up, like right here. Uh, but then when I go down to option two and set it to zero, it, it suddenly shows up. Okay? So back to the arms. You can see I don't have arms. So we need to go through and we need to find arms that are going to fit the character appropriately. You can see these kind of work but don't really work. It looks like you have holes in your clothing. And that's exactly what an experienced role player would tell you, is that you have some holy clothing. You need to go get that fixed. So we're going to go through here. And that was close. No cigar. This one looks pretty good. Not seeing any holy clothing. I can hit my X button to put my hands up in there. And it's not popping through anywhere. So that's going to work just fine. So we'll go with those arms. Something else you might notice is that I have this little bow tie on. Well, I don't want that little bow tie on. So we're going to go down to chain. Now, it's not a chain, but the idea is that it is where a chain would go. So any kind of neck accessory is going to be under your chain options. I'm just going to go ahead and zero that out. And the only other thing that I really want to point out to you guys would be not to select a bag option because your bags that you find will automatically show up on your character's back. So you don't really need to put a bag. And the other thing would be to utilize an option that is new to some players, which is going to be scars. Uh, it is a post-apocalyptic world, so your character could have some disfigurement uh, as far as, you know, scars. So, that is a cool feature to utilize. Definitely not something you have to utilize, but it is an option that is new and available to you. Okay, so, once you go down through all of these options, and you're like, okay, my character looks pretty good. I think I'm ready to start. What do I do? Well, the last thing you want to do is you want to make sure your character actually has eyebrows. You thought we were done. No, you need to make sure your character has eyebrows. This is a skip that always gets stepped by new players. Um, you need to go down to the eyebrow size, and you need to move that up. 10 would be the max. It's the easiest way to see it. And now you can see I have eyebrows. And you can go through and you can select whatever eyebrows you think are appropriate for your character. Those look pretty good to me. So I think we will go with that. I am going to hit the enter key. And we're good to go. All right. So there are multiple starting locations in the world. It will randomly select one of these locations for you to start. So if you and your friends start at the same time, you may not start at the same location. Just something to be aware of. If we hit P, we can look at the map and we can see that we are spawned all the way down here on the very southern part of the map. You could start in the very northern part of the map. It just varies. Okay, so part of the reason that you're at a, a specific starting location that is isolated is part of the server story. All of the characters that are playing in the world are characters who are coming back to society. You have been isolated. As you can see, we're isolated. And we've been kind of just doing our own thing. Um, in the server story, you will find the first part of the story, which suggests that you are living by yourself. You receive some sort of a message from someone living in the mainland, and they're inviting you to come back and help rebuild society. 
if you look at your map, you'll see that there are some markers on here, like the city safe zone. This is where society is starting to rebuild. And there are currently three safe zones, one in Grapeseed, one in Polito, and one in the city. And establishing more safe zones will be part of the server story. When you start at these isolated areas, you will know that there may be some items that you can search. So here is a box of ammunition. Well, it looks like ammunition. Explosive, it says on there. And depending on when you join the server, it's either going to give you a prompt to search it. As it says right there, press E to search if you can see that. Or you're going to use your third eye. Many things in the server involve your third eye. If you see that black third eye that uh, is appearing in the middle of the screen there, that's when I'm pressing down and holding the Alt button. So, once you get into the server, there may be many options where you will search these objects using your third eye rather than seeing a prompt, press E to search. So just keep that in mind, and you can hold down your third eye and walk around and search to see uh, you know, what you might be able to interact with. Okay, I didn't find anything useful in either of those boxes. That's another good reason to head back to the mainland because we don't really have too much out here. If you open your inventory, which should be default tab or F2, if neither of those works, you can hit escape, go to settings, and it's a good idea to get familiarized with this anyways. Go to key bindings, go all the way down to 5M, and then you can go through here and get familiarized with uh, the different key bindings that are available in the server. Um, as you can see right here, open player inventory, tab. You can change that to whatever you would like it to change to. Just make sure that you're not overwriting an already existing key bind. Um, but yeah, get familiarized with some of these things. It can definitely be useful, like the seatbelt button in a vehicle. Um, or perhaps throwing the weapon that you have in your hand which is the K button. So if you have your gun in your hand and you hit K, you will throw your weapon away. So I have my bat and I hit K and there goes my bat out into the ocean. So it's good to know your key bindings. All right, now, if we look around here, we should find a way to get down, and we can hear a boat running. There should be several boats in your starting area. You can see there's two at this one right now, actually. Sometimes there's more. Sometimes there might only be one. All right, we'll head over to this boat. Look around the area. It looks like there's only these two that are floating here. This looks like the nicer boat, so I think I'm going to go with this boat. Uh, if you open your inventory back up, you're going to have a... We also have our backpack level one right here. I would recommend that you keep your backpack up on your hotbar. And the reason for that is if you hit the five that corresponds with the number, it will open your backpack here on the right side. Backpack level one, I can keep these items out of my pocket, and it... Uh, frees up inventory slots, and it also redistributes uh, the weight that you have um, when you're moving it from your backpack to your pocket and things like that. So you can see much of the map is uh, flooded. I'm going to head up to the closest land. Let me uh, maximize my screen really quick. If you look at the boat fuel... All of the boats are going to start with very minimum fuel. Uh, the reason for that is to encourage you to get to land. Uh, you're not really supposed to be using the starter boats too much. However, you can go get fuel and come back and fuel up the boat and uh, use it to explore the area if you uh, wish to do so. All right, so I want to put this boat here, but you can see it's starting to move. It could possibly float away. So I am going to go ahead and anchor this boat in this position. And now that'll stay there until I come back, if I want to come back and get it later. If we open our inventory again, 
we can right click an item to use it like the backpack or we can hit that hot key again to open the backpack i'm going to pull out my cruiser bicycle and you can see it will be placed in front of you on use third eye use to pick up so i can press three pops down a bicycle for me third eye and you can see you get an option here to flip the vehicle, place in the vehicle, take out stretcher. Those are obviously not going to be associated with the bicycle. But this option right here, get this bicycle, will allow me to pick my bicycle back up and place it into my pocket. But we're going to pull that back out. And we're going to begin our journey. That fella does not look like he's uh, a fellow survivor, just going to say. So we might want to not allow that fella to touch us. And uh, we need to get out of here. Not sure, we might need to uh, actually pick up our bicycle. There we go. This guy's got strong thighs. <laughs> I could never battle a bike like this. All right, here we go. Into the zombie infested land we go. Now, let's just bring up our map again here really quick. And it is nighttime, and there are a lot of zombies out, so we got to be careful. We pull up our map. We can see this safe zone area. <clears throat> At the safe zone, there's a crafting bench here. There is also an ammo and weapon area. And there are several other useful things that you will find at the safe zone. So we are going to go ahead and head up to the safe zone first thing. That's going to be my first stop. I just want to go up there, see what they have to offer for one thing, and perhaps see if we can meet somebody else to team up with or to gain information from. Now, let's say there's no zombies in the area, and you're like, man, where where can I get additional stuff? Well, there's really there's stuff all around you guys. So, for instance, trash bags. You can search inside of these, find potential loot. Dumpsters could have potential loot. There are several boxes that could have potential loot. And the only way you're really going to know is just by looking, searching, trying to see. You can also type in help into the chat, and this will bring up the guidebook. Now, the guidebook is in its rough draft form currently. This will get expanded on and uh, refined as time goes on. But when you start out, you'll see here you have a loot tab. And there are different objects around the map that you'll be able to loot. So, <clears throat> as you can see, these boxes right here are an example of some of the things you can loot. Uh, here's another uh, example of things that could be looted uh, and, and several other examples of things that you can, uh, you know, search for to interact with. Uh, there's also additional information about zombie types, what you want to avoid, and information about the safe zones, which is where we're going to be headed to. So we will go uh, be able to see all this firsthand. Now, I would definitely recommend to you, if it's your first time, to take things cautiously. Uh, you never know what could be around the corner, and you never know how much of a threat the zombies could suddenly pose to you, even though things seem relatively safe and calm. Things can escalate very quickly, and if you get overwhelmed by zombies... It can be very frustrating uh, to lose all of your items. Now, when you go down, like I said, you will lose your items, but they're not just gone into the void. They will fall onto the ground, and then you'll have a opportunity to get back to your body and reclaim your items. Uh, the amount of time currently that you have to get back to your body is going to be 15 minutes. So make sure you keep that in mind. 
I wouldn't recommend searching or doing too much, uh, you know, exploring if you are trying to reclaim your items. Pretty much set a straight line to your body and, and try to get there as quickly as possible. You will notice there are fires in various areas around the map. Typically, the fires are in areas that offer decent loot. And those fires are started by hostile NPCs. So speaking about the hostile NPCs, if we look at the map again, you'll see that there's these red skulls with a red proximity around them. These are going to be known as danger areas. Danger zones. These are areas that are occupied by survivors, but they are hostile survivors. So they are other other people who have made it through the zombie apocalypse, but these are people who feed off of other people, essentially. Uh, these areas offer good loot, but you need to keep in mind that these people are very hostile and that you need to be well coordinated with a group of individuals to really take these camps out. Trying to do it solo is possible, but it is definitely not recommended. And it is not going to be somebody who is new to the server. This would be an individual that would be heavily decked out with multiple heavy armors, riot shields, good guns, medical items, things like that. You'll see much of the map is transformed. This is because this time period is many, many years after the initial outbreak of the zombie virus. So much of the world has changed. All right, here we are. Arriving at the safe zone that you can see has electricity. The gates are working. There are soldiers inside as well as other survivors. So right here you can see this is our uh, some of the boxes that we saw in the example picture of what you can search. Take a quick look here. Ah, oh, look at that. Found a flashlight. Alright, so this guy right here is going to have some jobs. Combat medic is going to be the default job for everybody, uh, which means that you will be able to diagnose other uh, survivors. If you have medical items, you'll be able to apply those to them and uh, help people out generally. Combat Medic is a great role to have in a group of people, especially if they have the appropriate medical tools. They'll be able to keep you going without having to rely on safe zones for your medical needs. Uh, clothing Creator, which currently just creates the default clothing for all of the NPC civilians. And a Fuel Creator, which creates the fuel for the NPC camps. Not to be confused with your own fuel needs. The Fuel Creator job is specifically to supply the safe zones with fuel. As you go through, you'll notice that there are various NPCs. This is the clothing creation safe zone. So at this safe zone, you'll be able to change out your outfits right here and get new clothing for your survivor. Each safe zone offers its own unique um, content, I guess I could say, or they each bring their own unique thing to the world. This gentleman right here is going to be the person that you would speak to to go on duty as a clothing creator. City safe zone is the largest safe zone. You can see these guys are guarding the access to the upstairs roof, which is where the doctors are in this particular safe zone. Down here you can see that there's a few different people that you'll be able to interact using your third eye. 
This guy says, hey, I'm looking for these items. I'll pay in ears. So if you have these items, he will give you zombie ears. Zombie ears are the currency in the zombie apocalypse world. You might say, why zombie ears? Well, the reason for zombie ears to be the currency is because they can't be just produced, you know, easily. And when you do produce them, you're actually helping the world by cleansing it of the zombie infection. So everyone loves zombie ears and uh, they are used as the currency in the zombie world. This man has supply sales. He offers different items that you can purchase for zombie ears. And there is one more gentleman back here in the corner. This is going to be your weapons and ammo. Now, keep in mind, these are just the most basic weapons. The most well, cheapest basic pistol, pump shotgun. Uh, there is a fire axe option, bat, wrench, hatchet, pickaxe. These are our tools right here. Your pickaxe, your hatchet, and your wrench. This is for collecting stone, collecting wood, collecting metal, and other useful objects. These are going to be your melee weapons. However, these all can be used as melee weapons, keep in mind. And a fire axe could also be used to collect wood just like a hatchet could be. We're going to head upstairs. Or up the ladder, I should say. And this first location is going to be the ear bank. Every safe zone has an ear bank, and they all look exactly the same, so it's easily recognizable. You can come up to this gentleman. Access your ear bank, and everyone starts with a balance of 500 zombie ears. You can then pull those out into your pocket. Keep in mind that any merchant in the safe zone is going to want zombie ears in hand. So you will need to pull the zombie ears out of the bank, have them in your inventory, and give them to the traders. If we explore here further, there's some areas where you can sleep up here if you would like to. Sit by the fire, have a conversation with some friends, wait until morning when the zombies are a little bit more manageable. We come up here to this guy. This is going to be the check-in for the medical tent. And it will take... It will cost you 10 zombie ears to use the medical tent. Now, these gentlemen, for sanitation reasons, they will not accept zombie ears from your pocket. They want your zombie ears to be in your zombie bank, and then they will contact the military person over there to get the ears transferred to their funds. But this is the medical tent where you can recover. If you go down out in the world somewhere, you will always respawn at the closest safe zone. And the game will determine that by exactly how close you are to each safe zone. And it will teleport you there and you will respawn there. Now, through a role play context, the idea of you respawning back at the safe zone is that some survivors that you aren't even aware of, you didn't even see them, they found your body out there, they realized you were still alive, and they brought you back to the safe zone to recover. All right, so that's some of the basics of the world out here. There are many uh, places that you can explore. There are hidden areas that you can explore that have uh, better loot potential. Uh, some areas will only have specific loot, so you can't just get anything just in one specific part of the map or by doing just a few different things. You really need to kind of go out there and explore and venture into all the different aspects to really utilize and figure out how everything works and what all is available to you. Um, there will be more jobs in the future as they get created. If you have an idea for a job, you can always recommend that in the Discord. Um, another feature that we have in the server that I will show you guys really quickly is going to be the base building aspect. So let me just move myself over here real quick. Every safe zone is going to have a crafting table that you can utilize and also a scrapping machine that you can utilize. 
we open this crafting bench, you can see all the different crafting options, and many of these are going to be for base building. Now, you can build your pieces right here if you wish to, and go out and create a base somewhere. Or you can create a wooden crafting table, which is the same crafting table that we're accessing right now. Create that table, go out to where you wish to create a base, put that on the table, and then start crafting your items and creating your base. Keep in mind, you will need to have a foundation down to be able to build the other aspects of the base, okay? The crafting table is the only thing, as, uh, uh, well, along with the, the stove and the generator, I believe. Um, these are the only three items that won't require a foundation. Uh, everything else will require a foundation except for the big gate and the wooden wall. These are used to create your perimeter of your base or your camp or your community. However you decide to do it. Do keep in mind there is going to be a decay on all base items. So you'll have to keep up with them. Uh, if you have a wooden base, you'll have to use wood to keep it up to snuff. If you update your wood to metal, you'll have to use metal. If you use stone, you'll have to uh, use stone. So make sure you keep your base in a manageable size, depending on how many people you have and how much time you want to spend, you know, repairing your base each week. And lastly are going to be the vehicles. <clears throat> Everybody always wants to know about vehicles, where are the vehicles. I don't want to ride a bicycle everywhere. I don't want to run everywhere. There are burnout vehicles that you will be able to find in the world. Now, these vehicles will not be just a crushed up, rusty GTA prop like this. They will be recognizable vehicles, okay, that you know of. However, the vehicle will be, it will have flat tires. It might be missing um, doors. It might look like it was on fire or it exploded. If you go up to those vehicles uh, and you use your third eye, it will give you a prompt to restore the vehicle. Okay, now if you don't get any kind of a prompt, obviously that's not going to be a vehicle you can restore. However, if you do get this prompt and it says restore, you will get a, a list of the parts that are required to restore that vehicle. Make sure that you gather all of the parts you need when you go to do your repair. Don't just gather a few and then put those into a random vehicle you find out into the world. Anybody can go up and fix any of those vehicles and claim it as their own. Once you finish creating a vehicle, it becomes your vehicle and is tied to you or your crew. Now, if you have friends that you play with, you just want to type in crew and then this will give you the ability to create a crew and then invite crew members. This is also how you can share a base, is using the crew system. So if you have a vehicle, you can uh, also share that with your crew members. And um, be able to utilize the vehicles, uh, as well as the, the locks. There are vehicle locks, which is going to be your J muscle, which you can learn, learn in your key bindings. Um, keep in mind, vehicles are meant to take a little bit of time to be able to get. Uh, we don't really, you know, want to see people having them the first few days of them, you know, coming back into the zombie apocalypse. It's meant to be something that takes a little bit of time, and once you finally get it, it is a hugely rewarding moment, and it's a very powerful asset, having a vehicle. Um, you know, when you start going from vehicle transportation to a vehicle that is a huge leg up uh, so that's how it's supposed to be seen and it's supposed to be a progressive thing so just try to keep that in mind guys uh, if you see a vehicle and you're like wow it takes so many parts and it takes you know a bit of time to get going that is the reason that it takes that kind of time is because it's a very powerful thing to have a vehicle uh, when everybody else is on foot patrol or on a bicycle so that is going to be the basics of getting started out here, guys. If you have any questions or concerns or any problems, please always go to Discord and file a ticket or use one of the helpful channels to get the information, and uh, we'll get you helped out. All right? So just keep in mind, I know it's frustrating, and uh, it sucks to lose all of your stuff. We've all gone through it many, many times. Uh, it happens even, even to people who have played regularly. So, 
Just try to have fun, guys. And uh, keep on role-playing.